Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, J.K. Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Brothers, anyone can talk the talk, but not everyone can walk the walk. And that's why here at Porn Reboot, where we do walk the walk, I'll be sharing every few episodes some snippets of success stories and testimonials from brothers who are in our implementation intensive and in our free groups and they're going to be sharing some of the results they've been getting so that this can further inspire you to take action on all the different tips and techniques that you learn while listening to the Porn Reboot Podcast. Enjoy. Hey, everyone. I have Jason here. He's from the Implementation Group, and he's willing to share his story and experience with us today. Jason, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came across the Reboot system? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity, Ariasis. A little bit about myself. I'll be turning 30 here in January. I live in Kansas. I was in the program for two years, the implementation program. And I came across the program through a lot of the YouTube free material. I was just wanting to end my uh, out of control behavior. And also, I actually knew JK as well before. That's how I ended up coming across. Because I was like, because JK popped up on my Facebook once. And then I was like, oh, look at that. And then went on to his YouTube stuff. Nice. And... If you don't mind sharing, what were what specifically were you struggling before you joined the program? What was that one thing that you constantly were struggling with? What would you say? Just or really and just out of control. Just sometimes there'd be obviously there'd be times where you feel like you're in control, but you constantly keep going back to the same behavior of masturbation and pornography. Thank you for sharing that. And how, how was your life then? Was that affecting like your career, your social circle, relationships? How was that affected? I guess all of the above, right? So it's pretty, yeah, I was in a pretty dark place. I'll be honest with you. Everything looked a lot of time wasted because I felt like I wasn't taking advantage of a lot of the opportunities that were presented to me. And I, it took me like forever to graduate college. Normally people take what, four to five years. It took me like 10. And yeah, yeah. exactly. And also the career wise, always didn't take a lot of the opportunities that were provided because I just was contempt and just satisfied yeah. with whatever was presented to me. I wasn't really achieving for anything higher. I was just like going with the floor, just taking the path of least resistant, as we say, right, in homeostasis, and wasn't really shooting for much. Not and yeah, relationships, yeah, yeah. the same thing too. I was also like very emotion-wise as well. I was very, I would say, not that I'm perfect or a saint or anything, but I was a lot more like looking back, a lot more like selfish and just always blaming others before mm-hmm. taking responsibility and those kinds of things were really preventing me from really reaching my goals. Yeah, that's super detailed, man. That's good. I feel like a lot of us were in that place. And you mentioned like 10 years to graduate college. And I laugh because I was laughing at myself, like, dang, I couldn't even go through college. I went for two years and then I was like, my mind wasn't there. So I couldn't even focus. So the fact that you were able to graduate, you still persevered, which is good. And yeah, you had the, the common symptoms of someone that's been struggling, not being able to connect, right? Walling off. That's completely like, my case as well when I was going through this process. So thank you for sharing that, Jason. So when you were doing the system, right, what improved? What was one of your big or major wins that you experienced while doing the system? Big thing was being honest. I think that was one thing that I lacked was just being vulnerable and open. To be even frankly more honest, just since we're on that topic, but you know, at the first, I know I said I was in the program for two years because I like dipped around for the first seven months. I'll be honest, I was just thinking just being in the program was going to solve everything. Obviously, there were some, I installed Covenant Eyes and just some medium boundaries. And that was okay. That was better than, so I was like, you know, decreased my nowadays. Oh, I'm only relapsing like once every two weeks or, or once a week instead of an everyday thing. And I was, but then I wasn't really using everything available to me, but yeah, I really took that next step by actually being honest. There were some, when I first started, I had like accountability partners that I wasn't honest with and, and vice versa. And you go through this weird cycle of APs in the beginning, cause you're not taking it seriously. But then I finally got like a stable accountability partner. Once I started seeing, I'm really wasting time and money here. 
So I got to really take it on to the next level. And that was first by just being honest and just reporting to my accountability partner. Like everything, because it's just, cause it's not just about being in like acting out or anything like that, but just being like, hey, how's their day? Instead of just saying things good, being more detailed. You know what? Actually, there was a time during the day that I was a little bit more emotional. I was like reminiscing on old things just to get bad for whatever reason. <laughs> like just being, you know, because even my AP would call me out. They'd be like, you keep saying things are good. Can you be more specific? Or And I was like, okay, you know what? And also by learning from him as well, because he was like very vulnerable and up at first. Mm -hmm. And also like, you know, in the group, people are like very open. And that's not something that I was used to, just being vulnerable and open. And so just being like open with my accountability partner, I think that was a big first step to just actually rebooting instead of just fucking around. Really. Yeah. Man, that's awesome, dude. I feel like, honestly, we could consciously say it. Yeah, I'm honest, but <laughs> then you start to notice like how, how I'm dishonest by not saying, by withholding information, you're still lying to yourself, yeah. mainly to yourself, but you could fool others. But when you're dishonest to yourself, that affects like your integrity. And when your integrity is affected, you feel bad, right? It's like a consequence. And then and what do you use for a coping skill for? <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's cycle, right? When you don't catch that, yeah, someone could tell you that. But then when, but you, when you put in the work and, and I guess when you develop wisdom, that's when you're like, oh, damn, I saying that I am good is just really, that's such a shitty answer for someone that's, <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> so there's someone that's vulnerable and sharing like, oh, damn. And I'm saying good. That it makes you feel, oh, I, damn. And it's good that you left for your accountability, man. That's really, yeah. You, like you said, it's sometimes it's hard to find the right one in the beginning, but once you have that one guy in a solid relationship. Bro, it takes it to another level and it becomes more than just you guys become relationship, right? Something that's more intimate and it grows you. It become teaches you how to be vulnerable. And I like that you said that you were in a group for two years, but even JK says himself, it takes about a year and a half to two years to reboot. Yeah. And because we need to develop these skills and foundation. But thank you for sharing that, Jason. And what was what was your favorite tool that you used? What what was that one tool that you stuck with until this day? Well, dialogue. That's my it really grounds me in a way it's at first it doesn't feel like doing but like after a while like after repeated practice and stuff like that and like knowing what questions to ask yourself when dialoguing i think that once you figure it out that that's been my key thing like every time i get a trigger and stuff like that my like go-to dialogue is what do i want like that's been my like kind of mantra of dialoguing and then just basically with my inner addict or just my own reasoning and you know just around me but sometimes we don't know. And that's, you know, one of the things I came in was like, I was like this weird high frequency jittery guy, you know, just like always impulsive, you know, just like uh, acting on anything that comes up and like just dialoguing really does, I'm mean, calling meditation or whatever, but like it really just keeps you real and just like grounds it. Okay. What is it that I really want? And then I go from there. It's okay. I need, maybe I just need some sort of friendship and that's why I'm it's like, okay. Then, and then like transition to like rational, rational belief. Kind of, and that's one thing leads to another. That's what I found out. And then, and immediately you get like an irrational, I don't have a lot of friends that irrational belief. Well, no, that's not true. You have all these people go call somebody. You haven't talked to them in two years and just stuff like that. And dialoguing, what do I want? And sometimes it's, I want to intimacy. And so you don't have a girlfriend, how are you at irrational belief? And then we can work on that. And then it gives you hope and just basically constant dialoguing. And just that, that would be my key number one. And also it depends on, and I know Jakey's mentioned that some, there's some phases, if you want to call it at beginning. My favorite tool and stuff were like rational, irrational, like what do you use first? And as you change and you learn from all the data you've collected, you'd like mutate along the way. Cause you're a human being and you change, but as long as you're, uh. you're using the full, everything on your tool belt, I think that's good. But right now I would say dialogue and it's been consistently that last couple of months. Man, dude, that's awesome, bro. And I agree with you. We're all are different. We all take things a little differently and we use certain tools more than others. But the fact that you're able to say, it's hard to explain certain things because you have to experience them. But yeah, you said it well with the dialogue. Oh, it grounds you. It keeps me from going to unnecessary thoughts and putting them in my mm -hmm. conscious. Because if I have those thoughts in my conscious, the next thing is to act on it. So, yeah. so how do I prevent that? By stopping it and asking quality questions. Yes. And the level oh, of questions that exactly, yeah, yeah that's how it Because yeah. if you just say, oh, how do I stop porn? Then it's, damn, that's such a vague question. But you really want to ask, how do I be, how do I stop making myself small? And how do I put myself out there? That's scary as shit, but those are the questions you have to face. 
uh, and porn is just like a band aid they just ripped off, and it's not a big deal. Exactly. Once, yeah, but that's awesome, brother. Thank you for sharing that. And so you mentioned a little bit like how I improved your social. So how have you seen the difference so from two years ago from Jason and now? How is your social? How is your relationship with people and connection? I think it's a lot better. And that's one of the reboot capitals, right? One of the things I said I would work on was my social because it's, I've like really isolated myself for the last so many years by just being selfish and you're just a shitty person. You're really not attracting quality people, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. And so that was one of the things. So I like really uh, put an effort and that's very nice because by the, where I live around the you know, uh, area, they actually have these like meetups and especially um, through my like church and diocese, automatic, like pretty like-minded people to begin with. So I was like, oh, yeah. and I've been going to some of those. And there's this like nice little group we have, like we meet every two weeks and stuff like that. And we oh. do some fellowship as we call it, which I never thought. And also on top of that is also the, and we talk about this in the modules and in the group is just repairing old relationships as well. It's just actually realizing and taking accountability of some of the things I've done to fracture that uh, relationship and like trying to repair those takes some relationships take a long time than others. Yeah. And so trying to work on those to really bring some good people in if they were of good people that I really want advice from. So I'd you know, reach out to them and and some of them have been a lot, lot better state to make social and some of them are older as well some people sometimes people give you advice and maybe shut them away everything and then i don't want to give you advice anymore and so actually yeah. going back and saying listen i know a couple of years ago you were very helpful and i really did take advantage of all of that and so it's just wow. been like in a humble and just apologizing again just reaching out and if they're a good enough person they'll they'll understand reach out so i know i felt like i went on a tangent there but social way just that, that things have been really good no though you did not go on a tangent that was beautiful it's not, that's so humbling to go to someone and say, hey, bro, I, I know I acted like an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but I like, but you're like, hey, man, you're right. These, at the time, I didn't have the awareness or understanding of what you were saying. Right now, I appreciate you. Actually, you know what? Those are wise words you told me. And the fact that you do those things, man, they may seem like you could easily dismiss those. But having that, that action that you take, it's, it, it helps you too, like that. Those are for you forgive people. And the reason you did all that is to, so you'll be forgiven as well. Oh, I want to experience that and help others. They probably need that closure. But, and again, you're not doing that for your own selfish act. It's more to, Hey, I know it's the right thing to do. And Hey, if they don't accept it, that's not up to me. I did my part. Yeah. Which is awesome, bro. That's maturity, man. <laughs> that's some adult shit. <laughs> but I love that. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah. No, dude, thank you for sharing that. And man. I want to keep picking at you on that, but I won't. Let's. That's fine. You know, the, the other thing was also the thing that, as you were saying, that just reminds. Yeah. It's also it's like being humble and stuff like that. I think it all comes down to like some of the things that we work on our program. It's also like our self image, right? Yeah. It's like how do you let yourself get defined? What is it? And that was one of the things that work on, right? So I don't yeah. care. I know it might sound a little selfish, like I don't care what other people think, but you should in a little way. But at the same time, you can't give them all the power. So just being and. Being humble just means, you know what, even if the other person says, fuck you, you're shitty, that not letting that affect me because you know what, that comment is not going to change who, what I think about myself because you know what, I tried and that's what it is. And too bad when we move on. <laughs> and yeah, and you learn it's not personal. It's all projection sometimes. Yeah. It, like they're just projecting something. And that I love that's one of your core values, right? I guess that's what it is. One of your core values is to be that way. And hey, man, I'm glad you have that. That's again, that's one of the qualities of someone that's rebooted and I fucking love it. So thank you, Jason. That was, you didn't have to share that, but we re greatly appreciate this. This is so awesome. And next question, brother, did you attend any of the reboot coaching calls? I never asked a question, but mm -hmm. the Milan JK's one. So it will be right around this time. If it's in the morning, I'll just yeah. be listening in. And I don't think I've made it to any of Dr. Rankin's. But I definitely made it to the whole bunch of Dr. Amulan and Dr. Eastman. And those are like two very interesting calls sometimes, because especially Dr. Eastman's too. Yeah, that one gets a little interesting because of the questions they get at people's yeah. uh, beliefs. And you learn a lot from that. Just by listening, you do learn a lot. Like, oh, yep. I have that kind of same liberal belief. <laughs> it's so shit. Yeah. But, yeah. We're so, so similar, even though you think you're so different than everyone else. And maybe that comes from 
the selfishness kind of thing in a way where yeah. you're so different and you're so special, but you know, everyone asking that question, they're like, oh yeah, me too. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And and those are, and Dr. Eastman at the coaching calls are so great because you think, especially Dr. Eastman, and we all have our traumas. And in a way, there might be different types of traumas, but there's a weird arc that just pretty much like similarities in all of them. They share some sort of characteristics that can you can use it to your situation. And she's not there to coddle you. Sometimes she'll hold you accountable. Yeah, it's not a there there session. And yeah, then yeah. I was the first time I was like, oh, wow. Okay, she's really challenging you. Yeah, exactly. Accountability. I was about to say, she challenges you. She don't take shit. Yeah. She, yeah, no, she doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. I was like, yeah, hey, you asked that question. You have to be ready for that answer. Exactly. exactly. Nah, thank you. So, nah, okay. Awesome. I'm glad you joined those calls. And did you practice any of the tools they, or whichever call did you gravitate towards more? Did you use one of their tools or methods? From the, the self-image stuff. And I remember like Dr. Milan talking about it when you have like negative thoughts. And I remember there was like one of, that's one of the big things I struggled with is just like this barrage of just every time you go out of your comfort zone, there's always a little bit of pushback, right? That little, that I know what they call like that, your inner bitch or whatever, that kind of come, yeah, yeah. you know, that comes out. And to, and I remember a lot saying like, just frame it and that voice coming from somewhere down lower and yeah. to basically talk down to it and do your nothing. Kind of way, and also sometimes it was like a nice little like early beginning stages. I remember every time you get it, you're you're trying to like fantasize something. Sometimes yeah, you get into this weird train of thought of fantasizing, and then like how to stop yourself by turning into something like grotesque to get yourself out of it. It's kind of things I read. I don't know why those are the first tools that came to mind, but yeah, there's lots of tools in every yeah. session. Is. Um, no, I like that one. That one's cool because because you give it a funny voice too, right? Yes, exactly. That, that funny. Yeah, I've done that one. Yeah. I do the Mickey Mouse one because it makes me laugh and I just get back to the moment. Uh, but thank you for sharing that, brother. And second last question for you, brother. For Let's say someone's watching this or brothers, man, I relate to Jason. I My self-esteem was not there. I was an asshole of people. I was this kind of dishonest. I noticed these qualities that, that you had before in me right now. But I, I don't want to take the step to join this program. Something's stopping me. What, what would you tell that brother? Go for it, man. Seriously, that's... Just being around people because it's sometimes you feel discouraging because you've probably tried it on your own for so long and failed. But just being in the group and being with such amazing people like um, yourself, Reboot Hero, and there's a few other Reboot Heroes now, of yeah. course, like JK and a lot of other success stories in the group. First of all, like just hearing that it's possible, just being around people that have actually done it puts a reality in your head and it gives you like a hope. So it's possible kind of thing, you know, it's like that, but yeah, it makes it possible. And I think that first itself is like a big mental leap to get you going. Yes. Yeah. And in the early stages, I was like, man, is it really possible? Cause it's something that you've struggled for so, so long. It's like for the rest of my life, or it depends on however you define your reap. But the other thing is also, there's so much richness in the modules that it's not out there. Like what we're talking about is just, we're only like scratching the surface and Everything about like some of the big things, like how to prevent, especially those emotional and mental relapses stuff. Like, like when you watch those modules are like, oh my goodness, like that'll really help you. And there's just a library, just archive questions from pe like thousands of people at this point. Every question has been answered and more than 10 times by JK and Grace, <laughs> Grace Lee. So yeah, if you're, if, if anyone listening was like, like somewhat in relate to my journey and story. I would highly recommend go ahead and yeah, reach out and it'll be the best thing you ever did. And you really, we talk about this in the programs, like the goal is not to quit porn. The goal is to become a person that doesn't need porn, right? That you hear that at first you're like, okay, that's cool. But you really don't know what it is until you've actually, you've gone there and you're like, yeah, at this point, it's not even about that anymore. It's just, how do you level up? Like, how do you, you know, go, how do you learn tools to be a success in whatever you want to do? Like that, that's the kind of thing is like stacking up all these wins, even outside, of course, if you want to control that, but at the same time, yeah. like these wins and all these other things that you live in the program, because that's the goal is to really become a quality person. Don't let your, just being your sobriety or whatever you call it, you can't let that define you. Like these other things, like your relationships, your call it financial stability, all these other things that those are the things that are actually, you want to get that you couldn't get. That's why you've been relying on porn and masturbation to cope. But 
you have to really level up and become a quality person. And that's, again, sorry for the tangent, but that's what it No, no, these are not tangents, bro. I could have said it better myself. It really is a journey. And I like what you said that a, it's bigger than just like what you think it is. And it's like a person that doesn't need it. And that instead of saying, I need to quit it, they're two different attitudes. And those two questions are very different and you get different results. And you went for the guy that doesn't need it. I don't need it. Why? Let's find out the why I don't need it. You take the appropriate actions. And like you said, you have all the modules. And hey, man, you said it better than I can right now. And I, I appreciate those kind words and encouragement for anyone that's watching this. And brother, last question. How would you rate your experience here or describe your experience in one word? Rated out of 10 with 11, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and word to describe it all. I'd say I'll go the easy word. It's called the implementation for a reason. It's implement, man. Got to put in the work. No more thinking that. Just do it. That's That was my yeah. implement. Just sometimes you get too bogged up, like thinking about this and that. Just, just shut the fuck up and do it. Really, all that is, I remember that was one of my big breakthroughs. was just sometimes you get too deep in your own thoughts. And like this, yeah. dude, shut the fuck up. You <laughs> go do your boarding routine. I love it. Well, I love that. I just do it. Implement. All right. You heard it from Jesus. Shut the fuck up and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm joking, guys. But yeah, seriously though, yeah. Just chill up and do it. It's not going to be easy and implement. Couldn't have said it better myself once again. So Jason, thank you for taking the time to share your reboot journey. I love this. It's one of the one of the best conversations I had so far with about your reboot, anyone's reboot journey so far. And I love it. And thank you for sharing this. And for those of you who are watching, thank you for taking the time to listen to Jason's awesome story and looking forward to seeing you, brother. Yes, you listening to this and relating to Jason's experience. Yeah, man. Get in the group and do the work. All right, brothers, signing out. Your Reboot Hero. And thank you, Jason. Thank you for showing up. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out-of-control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn-Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man, and free yourself from shame, guilt, and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom. 